to Mother Miriam Live on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network with live video streaming brought to you by LifeSite News and the Station of the Cross. Call Mother with your questions at 1-877-511-5483 or email her at mother at thestationofthecross.com. You can view the live stream on Facebook at Mother Miriam Live. Now, here's Mother Miriam. Good morning, beloved, my beloved family. How are your God's beloved family? How are you doing? I pray that you're doing well and that all manner of things are well. That's what our Lord said to St. Julian of Norwich. Many people think it's St. Julian's quote, but it's our Lord's words to her in the midst of awful times. All shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. You know, I... I ask myself, I don't ask God because I think he's not going to answer me right now, but maybe when we get to heaven, we'll know why he is allowing all that he's allowing to go on in the church, uh, specifically with the Amazon Synod. And um, I don't know the answer to that, but I do know, and you know, that God never leaves his throne. He is the king, and um, he is on his throne. And what he doesn't cause, he allows. And at the moment, um, I have believed for quite a while that um, our Lord and Our Lady are cleaning up the church. It needs to be cleaned up. All the people, especially um, the shepherds who have lost their faith, who have gone astray, who have gone into heresy, who really have left the faith in what is being talked about and proposed now through the Amazon Synod. Left the faith, left the mission, all of that. My heart aches for them, uh, and we pray for their conversion, but it aches for the many, many people that uh, are being and will be led astray through their, um, through their fall. That's what it is. It's their fall, F-A-L-L. And um, I think, why, Lord? Why, O oh Lord? The churches, the faithful who don't know their faith, who are weak, but they're, they're Catholic, uh, they're, they're just being led astray, or they'll leave the church. Why are you allowing this? And then I thought, uh, the answer is as clear to me as why God allowed the fall in the garden with Adam and Eve that would plunge the entire human race into sin. Uh, that's clear as that answer is, which I've never had. And I don't know that anyone has. It, it's God's doing, beloved. He knows what he's about, as Cardinal Saint Cardinal uh, John Henry Newman said. He knows what he's about. And what is for sure is that he's building his church and the gates of hell will not prevail uh, against it, will not prevail against it. And so what are we to do? Can we reverse the evil of our day? Can we save the world? I tell you what, we can in the same way God brought his apostles together, 12 men and one defected and was replaced, of course, who converted the world. Uh, to this day, they spread the gospel. And that's what we can do, beloved. We can live as if it's true, as I often say, um, we can, what can we do? We can live as if it's true with our whole heart more than we have ever, 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 ever lived it before. We raise our families, and I, I've said this several times, if we really live as Catholic Christians in the world, we will respect the Lord's day. We will keep it aside for family and for God and to get together with friends and to worship God, but not to inhabit the business world, not to go shopping, not to go to restaurants, not to have our day of fun uh, or outing at the expense of others who have to work. We need to withdraw from the world on Sundays and draw near to God. And then, as it used to be, Everything will be closed Sunday. Closed Sunday, that was the norm. But when we lost our faith and money became the issue, um, the stores opened and gradually, if people wanted jobs, they had to work on Sunday. Uh, even if they asked for the day off, they wouldn't have the job. So um, 
uh, you know, if I, I, I was going to say if I could, I would beg you, but I can. You don't need to respond, but I'm begging you. Um, Apostle Paul did in Romans chapter 12. It's the first verse I memorized as an evangelical Protestant, and I think I've not forgotten it. He says, therefore, beloved, and and my Protestant pastor used to say, what is the therefore? Therefore, it's wonderful. And it's there for the first 11 chapters of the book of Romans that reminds us that there is no one without sin and that God is the one who came and by his grace um, uh, provided the means of our salvation. The first 11 chapters of the book of Romans shows us all that God did to save us. And then chapter 12 starts, therefore, therefore, because of those things, uh, Romans chapters 1 through 11, therefore, brethren, I urge you, Paul says, I urge you, the word is beg, I urge you, I beg you, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a holy and living sacrifice, which is your reasonable Uh, service of worship, your spiritual service of worship. And he says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may know what is the good and holy and acceptable will of God. You see, that's the only way. We need to be living sacrifices, not like the dead sacrifices of the Old Testament that were dead. But living sacrifices, someone once said the problem with living sacrifices is that they could crawl off the altar. (laughs) Don't crawl off. We need to stay. We need to stay. We need to present our bodies a living sacrifice. We need to live our faith as if it's true, as if it matters for all eternity. And when we do that, we leave it to God what he does with that. We live with all our hearts what God has given us. And then it's up to him what he does with that. Um, And so uh, that's, that's, you know, I think of our situation here in Tulsa. Um, We have been told we cannot move forward in Tulsa. It's been over three years. We've been searching for a bishop and a home. And so far, uh, no bishop has invited us. Um, And so... um, and I won't go on with all the details, but uh, what do we do? Do we get depressed? Do we get discouraged? Absolutely not. We trust God. We trust God. He knows what he's about. He knows what he's doing. And when he wants us to move and when he wants us to come under uh, a bishop, that's what we'll do. And that's when we'll do it. And until then, we don't twiddle our thumbs. We have redoubled our efforts to live for God in the circumstances in which he has uh, allowed us to be. And so we give our whole lives right here to God. And he is doing wonderful things, beloved. We still don't have a home. We invite bishops who want us to come to let us know, but we still don't have a home. And um, we do have one very beautiful, holy, magnificent bishop uh, with whom we've met and we're we are praying that if it is God's will, that he will invite us soon. Um, and I say that because of the many women who are waiting to come in. But again, if God doesn't want it, we don't want it. It's a very simple formula for us. God's will is our food. And what God wants, we want. And what he doesn't want, we don't want. No matter how good something seems, if God doesn't want it, we don't want it. And how do we know if God doesn't want it? because he doesn't bring it about. And how do we know if he does want it? Because he brings us it, it brings it about. It's just so simple. It's so simple, beloved. When we long for God's will above all things, it's not that we'll have it one day. It's that we're in it. Because Satan or our flesh cannot cause us to long for that. Can at any cost, at any expense, that is not the desire of our own will unless God gives us those desires. And so that is our desire, that God's will is our food. And if you said, well, should we pray that this bishop accept you? I will say no. Pray that God's will be done because that's the only thing we want. And so um, we ask you to join us. And um, many of you know from our last newsletter that because of the times we're living in, 
and because of the confusion, uh, the evil of the world in the schools, even in creeping into Catholic schools, and uh, the, uh, so many defecting from the faith, all of that, that we have begun um, Mary's Oblates, and those are the Benedictine Oblates of the Daughters of Mary, our community, Daughters of Mary, Mother of Israel's Hope. Why Daughters of Mary, Mother of Israel's Hope? Because the hope of Israel is the Messiah, who is the only hope of the world. And we are Daughters of Mary, who is the Mother of the Messiah, and therefore the Mother of the Hope of Israel, who is Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah. And so instead of saying the mother of the hope of Israel, we say mother of Israel's hope. Same thing, shortened a little bit. So we are daughters of Mary, mother of Israel's hope. And so we have begun the oblates, the Benedictine oblates of the daughters of Mary, mother of Israel's hope. Um, And we're calling it Mary's oblates because we are daughters, sons, and daughters of Mary, the mother of the Messiah. And so Mary's oblates, and in the last newsletter, we had a form which a great number of people filled out, very simple, and and, and mailed in to us. Um, if you didn't receive the newsletter or you didn't go through it yet, it, it's, been, it's been a while since it's out, you can simply go to our website, www.motherofisraelshope.org, You'll see it on our home page, um, or just click newsletter, uh, the newsletter tab. It, it's the first one up, and just uh, print it out, or print out that one page, um, and mail it to us. Or you can ask us for a form, um, and send it to us. Um, it was very simple in that newsletter before we really got underway, um, and we have since. Um, we changed it a little bit, the design for Mary's Oblates. And we will have, it's going to be a monthly newsletter to help us together to live the faith, to help us together to live the faith. And we will go through for lay people to live the rule of St. Benedict, how to live a rule of life, very simple, according to our state of life, not according to a religious um, community, because we have to put the work of God, which is the daily um, prayer eight times a day, we put that before all else. Uh, Family life cannot do that. Most even single people who work full-time cannot do that. So the idea is um, to be able to have a rule of life that is absolutely as flexible as you need to make it. Um, But we will have it uh, in a monthly newsletter, not just the rule for lay people. Um, We have a book on uh, to give those who who become uh, who who, uh, become candidates for being oblates to give you. It's a commentary on the rule of St. Benedict for lay people. Um, But each newsletter, it's going to be monthly and um, uh, our normal newsletter comes out three, maybe four times a year. But this, to help guide everyone, we want it to be steady. So we're going to be sending it out every month, and it's going to have in it parts of the rule um, to to put into practice as you can, as you are able, and there's no penalty of sin. If you don't do it, there's no penalty of sin. You You are not under vows. But it's a way to encourage you to live the life that you want to live, but either haven't had the opportunity, don't know how, you're alone, whatever it may be. This is this is something for us to not be alone, for us to be together as true disciples of our Lord. And it will have as well in it a way for families to live. It'll have a section for families, for mothers, for fathers, to children, for individuals. It will always have... Um, a a section for uh, the rule, how to follow it, apply it to your own life as you are able, and how to live the faith in this world that's turned from God. Always something to do. Uh, Again, it's up to you if you take it on. Uh, You will not fail if you don't take it on. It's a way to strive. So, for example, um, Our Lady has asked us to pray the rosary every day. 
Well, some people pray all 15 or all 20 mysteries every day. Um, we don't do that here at the Daughters of Mary, Mother Visible's Hope. We do pray the day's mysteries every day. So at the moment, um, I'm speaking to you on Tuesday, and it would be the Sorrowful Mysteries, and we go through the five Sorrowful Mysteries. Um, and then tomorrow will be the Glorious Mysteries and so forth. Some people want to pray all the mysteries. That's fine. Some people have never prayed the Rosary or have not prayed it <clears throat> daily. And I would encourage you in our newsletter to begin to pray the Rosary, even if you pray one decade a day. For example, it's Tuesday and you pray the first sorrowful mystery, which is our Lord's agony in the garden. And that's all you pray. I want you to believe that's pleasing to God because you're striving. What do you do with little children? You, you are, you're not disappointed that when they learn to walk, they don't take 10 steps. You, you're, you cheer them if they take one or two because you want to encourage them and they're, and they're getting it and that's the way God is with us beloved even if we're 100 years old we're little children and he, he uh, pours his grace out upon us and rewards us for the little steps we take it's a, it's a really wonderful thing so we want to we want to help everybody us together as the family uh, of God to really begin the, to live the faith in this world that's turned from God. And you don't know, have to know how to evangelize. You don't have to know where everything is in Scripture, but you need to begin. You don't need to begin. I want to encourage everyone to begin to read Scripture. And, um, and I want you to believe that you are not failing if you are able to carve out five minutes a day to read one chapter of Genesis one chapter or half a chapter in the Gospel of John, whatever it may be. There's no shoulds. And I promise you that if you begin a habit of reading the Scripture five minutes a day, every day, consistently, you make a little prayer corner, a little time that you go to every single day, that five minutes will change your life every day. Consistency is the thing. That will change your life more than reading three hours twice a week. I promise you this. Um, it's not the length of time. It is the habit of holiness, of godliness, of being with God that we build into our lives. And five minutes a day will utterly change your life, again, more than three hours twice a week. We're not looking for knowledge so much as a pattern of holiness, of union with God. And through that, we'll have knowledge. But the issue is very, very, very small. Start small. If you want to spend an hour with God every day, this is a terrific goal. But don't start that way. You can. It's up to you. You're free to do that. But don't set yourself up for failure or, or what's going to be a burden to you or what you're going to feel defeated if you don't do it. Don't do that. Very, very, very small. And if you do more, that's fine. But don't put it on yourself. So our newsletter, monthly newsletter for the Oblates, will help you to grow in the faith and to be uh, an oblation. Your oblation is a sacrifice to God. Um, and you'll get this guide, um, very, very simple, um, once a month. And our first uh, newsletter for the oblates, for Mary's oblates, is going to be included in our next uh, full newsletter, The Daughters of Mary, Mother of Israel's Hope. We've had... Um, I don't know how many people so far have responded from our last newspaper newsletter. It's over a hundred, but um, but we will uh, our first newsletter. The newsletters will go strictly. The newsletters for Mary Eight's Oblates will go strictly to the Oblates, uh, those who become a part of this. But for our first newsletter, which we're hoping to send out um, next month, November. Um, to give you some help at the home for Advent as well. Um, that will be included with our full newsletter. So our complete newsletter, for those who are on our mailing list, 
will include the first eight-page oblate newsletter. Our full newsletter is 12 pages. The oblate newsletter will be eight pages, and they will be included together in the same mailing so that all of you who get our newsletter can see what it's about and what it means. I'll introduce it. What it, What is an oblate? What does it mean to be an oblate? What will be required to be an oblate? Uh, do you have to qualify, which you don't? You just have to be Catholic. You need to be Catholic and you need to love God. Um, well, you don't even have to be Catholic to get our newsletter and and to be an oblate. Uh, you can you can you can get the newsletter. You can become a candidate, but to take uh, promises as you grow, um, you want to be Catholic for that. Um, and uh, what else? And, and there'll be a section in there uh, for photos of oblate families and single people and, and, and groups that have come together to do this. We'll have photos. We'll have a Q&A section that I can answer questions. Uh, we can answer questions each newsletter that have been mailed in. Um, and so we'll let your questions lead the development of this. I, I'm very happy about it. And the... the um, the, those that have returned the form from the last newsletter, um, mo- I would say over 90% have, in a section for prayer and comments, have said, thank you, thank you, thank you for doing this. We need a way to live our faith. We need a guide. We feel so alone in the world. Our priests, our shepherds have abandoned us, or they're silent, or whatever it is. It's not always the case, blessed be God, but it is in a lot of cases. So um, we we're, we don't want to be alone. And so this is a way to encourage one another to love and good works, and to know and to love our God, and to know truth in the midst of this confusion. So... If you wish to be on our mailing list, again, you'll receive everything we have um, for the Daughters of Mary, Mother of Israel's Hope, and um, the and Mary's Oblates. Whether or not you're an Oblate, you'll receive the first newsletter and uh, everything else um, is sometime, uh, probably toward the end of November. And um, if you're not, if you're on our list, you don't have to do anything else. If you're not on our mailing list for our newsletters, just go to www.motherofisraelshope.org and click on the newsletter tab toward the right, and you'll see right up top a place for you to um, to sign up to receive our newsletter. Um, I I think. Um, uh, you can receive it by email and or by snail mail. Um, I would encourage at the moment everyone who's receiving it by email to make sure we have your actual physical mailing address because the next newsletter is going to be huge and is going to include... um, an incredible gift. I'm just telling you this. I'm not telling you what it is at the moment, but um, it's it's going to be packed. Um, and if you get it by email, you won't receive the things we're going to include. Um, and so I would um, I would want to encourage you to sign up. And again, if your email, go ahead and give us your regular address as well so you can receive a physical package that we're going to send out. And if you're email only and you prefer to remain that way, it's absolutely no problem. You'll get the email, but you won't get the the gifts or the things that are included. And so you can, if you're email only, just email us and let us know you uh, didn't receive what was included and we'll put it in the mail to you. It'll never be a problem. You do what works for you. Okay, enough. We have, um, we have a few people, um, uh, two people waiting on the line, and rather than go to our last glorious mystery, which is the coronation, which is, um, it's it's a, um, it's a it's quite a poem uh, that was put together by uh, G.K. Chesterton, and um, from 
uh, Regina Angelorum, it's called. It's the Queen of Angels, Regina Angelorum. She is the Queen of Angels when she was uh, assumed into heaven, the fourth glorious mystery, and then the fifth glorious mystery, crowned Queen of Heaven and Earth. Tomorrow, I know I told you I would do it today, but tomorrow... Um, it's just that we're starting these newsletters and Mary's Oblates and we're thrilled about it and don't want you to miss out. Tomorrow we will read that poem from G.K. Chesterton. Um, for now, beloved, that's the music for our first break and we will take your calls. We have Doris and Jean on the line. Hang on, dear, dear ladies, and we'll be back to you right after the break. Uh, the toll-free number to call or text is one 877 511 Five four eight three or email at mother at the station of the cross dot com. Don't go away. We'll be right back. St. John Paul II said, All forms of missionary activity are marked by an awareness that one is furthering human freedom by proclaiming Jesus Christ. One way you can proclaim Christ is by displaying a Catholic radio bumper magnet on your car. Request your free Catholic radio bumper magnets today. Visit thestationofthecross.com and click the Promote tab at the top of our website. That's thestationofthecross.com. Then click the Promote tab. Thank you for supporting Catholic Radio and helping to spread the gospel message to everyone else on the road. Love learning more about the church, but confused or disheartened by the struggles we are facing today? Follow LifeSite News Catholic on Facebook, Twitter, or sign up for LifeSite Catholic emails and stay up to date on the constant stream of news about the Catholic Church. Our church is in a time of crisis, and we as laity have a responsibility and a duty to educate ourselves and stay true to the faith. LifeSite News Catholic is dedicated to keeping the laity informed and educated. To follow us, go to Facebook or Twitter and search LifeSite News Catholic. As Mother Miriam always says, we must live as if it were true. Dominus et Fabius, Tune in weekdays from 6 to 7 a.m. Eastern for Sermons for Everyday Living, a program that brings you real sermons from real priests on topics important to you and your faith. Visit thestationofthecross.com for details. Welcome to Mother Miriam Live on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network with live video streaming brought to you by LifeSite News and the Station of the Cross. Call Mother with your questions at 1-877-511-5483 or email her at mother at thestationofthecross.com. Welcome back to Mother Miriam Live, beloved. Uh, I always say this is my favorite part of the of the hour to be with you and and take your calls and emails and text and we don't always have all the answers, um, uh, but we uh, seek to lead you to the sources that do. And if you ever have a question about what I'm saying, uh, if you think it's wrong, uh, you may be right that I'm wrong. Please don't hesitate to call in or to email or text and um, and and let me know. Uh, what you're thinking or, or um, what you believe an answer is or a further question that I've brought up, don't hesitate, beloved. I, I want to hear. This is a family affair, and I, I love hearing from you. And so during this half hour, um, if you have anything on your heart at all, call or text at one eight seven seven five one one five four eight three or email at mother at the station of the cross dot com. Uh, Doris, are you on the line from Wisconsin? Yes, mother. Hi, dear one. Thanks for holding on. Oh, thank you. I'm so blessed to be able to 
speak to you this morning. I'm a little bit nervous, but... <laughs> okay, then I'll be nervous with you. So here, we're nervous together. And go ahead and ask your question. I'll be nervous that I may not be able to answer it. Now we're in the same boat. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, in our parish, um, a couple, uh, maybe 20 or 10, 15 years ago, we had um, a pastor that uh, came out and said that uh, we really didn't have to go to confession. He ended up taking out the confessional. Oh, help. And then um, we couldn't say the rosary because it made him nervous. Well, see, so for all these years, we have parishioners that have never gone to confession in decades. Oh, my goodness. And uh, now we have um, a woman that is she is democratic to the word go and she is on the altar all the time and um she's a what do you mean minister. on the altar what do you mean what why well, is she there be during mass before mass what what does that mean uh, yes. during before after you mean she's an altar minister. server uh she's a eucharistic minister and she does a lot in the parish. Uh, she's actually the secretary. Um, but she's also um, whatever they do to become uh, a person that can hold uh, uh, communion services. Uh oh. And uh, and I approached our our pastor, and he said, "Well, is it some place around here?" He just he didn't understand. And I said, "He's from a third world country. I mean, he's a very holy priest." Um, but I said, "Father, she's your secretary." And I said, "If if you go past her house during a, an election year, and if you wanted to know who to vote for, I mean, she has every sign in her yard." And I've also approached her. That she cannot do this and be called a Catholic. She's promoting baby killing. Mm -hmm. and, but I don't know. I, I um, When I post things on Facebook about this, she'll come back and, and um, basically tell me I'm wrong. And blah, well, blah, you blah. shouldn't be posting this on Facebook. I would not okay. do that, Doris. That's uh, oh, I don't. It, I don't post her. I I post like things from Life Site and, and um, uh, Pro Life. You know. Okay, but you're not posting the negative. No, no. Ex unless they're included in a story from Life Site. That, that's okay. That's okay. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. No, she'll come back at me and say how wrong it is. You know, but I don't. Uh -huh. I don't. I don't answer her at all when she comes on all right a lot of how long is your pa how long has this current pastor been there doris um maybe four years but his um he will be leaving in in april um and you're going to get but, a new uh, pastor mm -hmm. yeah well um i would get a try to get a meeting with the pastor yourself mm -hmm. and uh can you bring, is there someone in the parish who uh, thinks about this as you do that could come with oh, you to yeah. meet with him? Oh, there's a lot of us. All right. Then I would say um, take a little group, a, a small group. Don't bombard him, but a small group. I don't know what small is, maybe, you know, five, six, seven at the most. And ask him if he would meet with you and have, don't everybody shout out things, just be there and have yes. the, whoever it is, it could be you, it could be someone else, would be the best, clearest, less, least emotional spoke, spokesperson and say, Father, yes. we know you're leaving in April and we've come here to beg you, uh, go through the, now he does hear confessions, right? Yeah, but it's very hard <laughs> to because there's no like, confessional. Well, there, well, we do it now because we have a new uh, uh, church that's built. But it's very hard to um, hardly anyone goes to confession. So if why go, and, uh, why is it hard? He's not in the confessional, and just when my husband was alive, he would go and get the priest and say, "Yeah, okay." You know, so sit, the, make a list, make a, get together as a little group, 
pray a novena for this priest and for your meeting with him. Pray to Our Lady a novena, uh, Our Lady's in charge of priests. And um, if he's a good holy priest, this is very good, and you'll be helping him in his priesthood. Tell him about the last priest. Tell him people have not been to confession for years. He didn't think it was necessary and all of that. Don't spend a lot of time on the priest, on that past priest, just to give him the background of why the parish is the way it is. And you have an extraordinary minister of Holy Communion who uh, is really not Catholic in practice because she votes and and advocates voting for people that candidates who are pro-abortion and all of that. Um, Mm -hmm. And she wants to have, you know, communion services for the church and all of that and say, Father, uh, we are so grateful for you and we know you're leaving in April And we've come to ask you um, if you would make some changes in this parish um, uh, before you leave. So it it will be a normal situation for the new priest coming in. And the changes we would beg you for is, one, um, if you are not able to get a new secretary, at least to stop her from being... uh, Uh, extraordinary minister of Holy Communion, and if you can't do that, at least do not allow her at any time and for any reason to hold a communion service. Um, There's a couple of other things I want to suggest, Doris. Can you hold on till after the break? Yes. All right, hold on, sweetheart. Um, That is our break, beloved, and it will be our last segment, uh, but this is a perfect time for you to call in toll-free, 1-877-511-5483, or email at mother at thestationofthecross.com. We'll be right back. of iCatholic Radio are leaving inspiring reviews in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Emilia says, iCatholic Radio is the only radio station I listen to. It's my constant companion whether I'm in my car or walking. It's a good way to learn and to deepen my understanding about my faith. It's a source of reliable information of which we badly need in our culture. I encourage everyone to listen and support iCatholic Radio as a gateway to heaven. Another reviewer writes, at last, a radio station worth listening to. Thank you. I love it. And Deepak writes, a Catholic media treasure trove, spiritually uplifting and fun. One reviewer says, love it, love it. I'm learning so much about the Catholic faith. It makes me seriously consider conversion. If you haven't reviewed iCatholic Radio yet, we'd love to hear from you. Visit our page at the iTunes or Google Play Store. LifeSite News is an international news agency devoted to defending life and family and restoring Christian culture. We aim to educate and activate our readers with the information they need to fight the most crucial battles of our day in their churches, workplaces, and families. Our motto is Caritas in Veritate, love in truth. We firmly believe that promoting the truth is an act of love, however hard it is to hear. Over the last 20 years, we have built a reputation for uncompromising reporting, no matter the cost. LifeSite News is by far the most popular pro-life website on the internet, with over 40 million unique users every year and growing. Check us out at LifeSiteNews.com. Mother Miriam Live on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network with live video streaming brought to you by LifeSite News and the Station of the Cross. Call Mother with your questions at 1-877-511-5483 or email her at mother at thestationofthecross.com. Welcome back, beloved, to Mother Miriam Live. I'm thrilled to be with you. That's always the case. Um, we have a, 
little over 15 minutes to ourselves. So feel free, beloved, to call in with anything on your heart um, at toll free or text at one eight seven seven five one one five four eight three or email at mother at the station of the cross dot com. We've been on the phone with Doris from Wisconsin, who has a very troubled parish and a previous uh, priest who um, uh, taught. I hate to use the word um, the um, the parish that. Communion was not, uh, confession was not necessary, and he took the confessionals out, and I forget what else you said, Doris, that he did, but now they have a new church with confessionals and a new um, uh, priest from outside the United States, and uh, but he has inherited a secretary that is uh, not Catholic in belief or practice, even though she may say she is, she is... Uh, supports pro-abortion um, candidates and all of that. And so um, uh, she's also an extraordinary minister of Holy Communion, and she's uh, trying to be able, trying to hold communion services and went through whatever would make that official for her. Are you there, dear Doris? <clears throat> yes, mother. All right. It's truly uh, uh, an awful, awful situation. So I would say try to make an appointment with the priest. Watch your attitude, all of you. Come with a very small group of people. Make sure you have got one spokesman and uh, you don't bombard him with the whole pe- pe- people jumping in. Watch your attitudes. They should be humble um, and uh teachable and all of that and tell him how painful this is and you've come to beg him um, uh, two things to try to reverse this to not allow any lay person to have a communion service at all um, yes. that's number one and um, uh, let's see um, Oh, I had a second. Oh, and also to tell him that the church requires us on pain of sin to go to communion at least once a year. And um, it is not the people have the right to be anonymous. And if you're not in the confessional, dear father, or you're sitting outside the confessional in a pew waiting for someone to come, you are really violating their privacy. They need to be able to confess without your knowing who they are. Whether or not you know their voices is between you and God, but they need the privacy. So we're, we're going to beg you to put up confessional times, and we actually are going to beg you to be in the confessional a half hour before every single Mass. Um, and just let people know that. And at the very, 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 very least, have two hours of confession time a week. Let's just say, uh, as many parishes do, an hour on Saturday, which is absolutely disgraceful to give an entire parish of hundreds of people one hour to confess. It's giving the message that it means nothing. But at yeah. least an hour on Saturday and before all Masses on Sunday. So different suggestions, Father, but there need to be times where we know you're in the confessional, even if you're saying your your divine office, even if you're reading something, even if nobody comes, we need to know that you're there and we can confess anonymously. All right, Doris, no. put, put together that yeah. little group and let them not come with an attitude of huffiness or, you know, any or complaint, but an attitude of of um, of sheep who are begging the pastor to be their pastor and change the the debauchery that's gone on for years. Yes. So that well, it'll be in place do. for the next pastor. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> now, mother, we do have. Um, beautiful places in Wisconsin and you were just there not too long ago. That's right. <laughs> I hope, I hope you, it's God's divine will that you come. To this okay. Church. All right. Okay. Yeah. That's good. I haven't made that public, Jean, but now it is. But at oh. least it's a, I did. I think I may have said I was going to Wisconsin. I don't know. But um, well, I, I love Father Hillman. And okay. Was, yes. So I, Okay. Okay. Story, so. Yes, and I was on his podcast. That's right. Um, yes. Yes. So uh, with Doug Barry. So, 
Um, yes. No, and we were at the, uh, Father Heilman has, um, uh, he invited me to the Rosary Rally where uh, Sister yes, Gertrude Marie and I, yeah. we went, yeah. okay, so no, we're we're kind of partnering in a, in a number of things. He's a very, very wonderful priest. I agree with you, Jean. Sure okay, he God sure bless is. you, dear one. God bless you. God I said Jean. You. I don't mean Jean. I mean Doris. But we're going yeah. to take a call from Jean now. Uh, also, uh, Jean, you're from Massachusetts, yes? Are you still on the line? Yes, I am. Um, yes, I am. I, I'm, I'm calling in gratitude. I'm calling in gratitude for you. There, there aren't enough of you, um, so I'm very, very, very grateful for you. But also, there are some people who think there's my, there's too many of me, even though I'm one. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but also in gratitude for the subject you brought up today, which is God's will. Hmm. Uh, in my li- in my life, uh, until I really came to understand how important it is to do your will, His will, because who knows better for us than Him. I made many mistakes. I did many dumb things. Not me. Now that I'm I, perfect. Now that I no yeah. <laughs> Now that I follow his will, things have been has of have course. changed for the for the better. Of course. So I just wanted to thank you for bringing that subject up because I I try to um I try to educate people that I know that you've got to put it in his hands and and know his will and do his will, you'll be happier. So I just wanted to share that with you. Okay. Because uh, I am I am so grateful. And also, could I have the the website to get that newsletter? I I, it, I didn't yeah. have a pen it's, to write it's that It's not down. a problem. It's not a problem. It's www. And then all one word. Mother of Israel's with an S on it, not apostrophe S, just S. Hope. dot org. Mother of Israel's Hope. dot org. And if anyone okay. forgets the okay. website, just type in Daughters of Mary, Mother of Israel's Hope, and and you'll get it. Okay, thank you. Because I definitely, I definitely want to be a recipient of, of uh, all the goodness that you can share. So, okay, thank you, Wonderful again. thank you again, Mother. God, God bless God, you, my God dear one. You, God keeps you. Thank yeah, you. And I want to make a comment, Jean. That and it comes yeah. out in your voice, your heart. The only ones who can say that it, that God's will is the absolute best and makes you happiest yeah. are the ones not who know it intellectually but who have really surrendered to live it because that's the only happiness we have. And I can tell you have, and therefore your witness is absolutely authentic. I, I, I thank you for that. Thank you. Okay. God bless you. We're going to go to Joe in Massachusetts as well. Are you there, Joe? Yes, mother. How are you? I'm terrific, dear. Yes. I'm, I'm calling to um, thank you for your bravery and fighting this, um, horrendous sex ed that's happening in our yes, country. Yes, yes. And um, <clears throat> I read the book, uh, <clears throat> I Get Out Now, that you've uh-huh. been reading from. Okay. And I have a 14-year-old daughter, and I'm divorced, and I'm fighting, have been fighting the school the school system, uh, trying to opt out of the class. But um, Is your daughter with you, know, you or with your wife? Uh, she's with the with the mother the, the mother okay gotcha uh-huh yeah. and um of course the daughter's fighting it the the mother is fighting at the schools you know it's a public it's school not, yeah public mm-hmm. school not being helpful you're and, not going to um, fight a public school i mean you can yeah, but a, yeah mm-hmm. and as a result of this this is this issue has been used as a wedge by her very spiteful mother um to alienate my child and now now my child from uh, you does it, yeah from me and because now, the, your because her mother does not see uh the evil of sex ed in the public schools is that why her mother wants her to go to those classes yep that's correct yeah oh help okay and it's and um um i'm just asking for prayers for uh um a uh, better relationship with my daughter because right now she doesn't want to have any time with me and the, the mother's using that uh, against me. So are you? how often were you seeing your daughter? Um, pretty much every other weekend and one, one uh, night a week. Mm-hmm. Every one night, every other, every week? One night, every, every two, week? Uh, yeah, every Tuesday and every other weekend, primarily. And every other weekend, all right. And yeah. she's yeah. she's fourteen. Do you have yeah, a plan sure. to see her again? 
You have um, a date, or is that up in the air? Well, it's kind of, uh, well, I have a date, but I'm kind of fearful that things are just, uh, things are in kind of disrepair, and the, the mother is just going to use this as a wedge to alienate my kids my kids okay. me. she's not she's not communicating not of course phone, of course i understand that anything. think of the first disciples joe they were jewish and they were ostracized and killed by fellow jews who didn't agree with them and those jews where would we have been today if those jews because they're fearful because their own people came against them uh, just kept silent and didn't tell them the truth. Um, I know that's not a perhaps a, an apt comparison, but um, don't let fear stop you from giving your life for your daughter. Don't let fear stop you. Don't let her, her mother's attitude stop you. Don't let your daughter's attitude, don't react to your daughter's negativity or mistrust or favoritism of her mom. Try to ask God to not, do ask God to not let that affect or guide or weaken you or silence you. You have the truth that your daughter needs to get to heaven. And don't let anything stop you from communicating with her. And I would say... The next time you're with your daughter, um, how long would that visit be? Would it be a weeknight? Would it uh, be? Uh, yeah, um, it'd be like an hour, hour for uh, one. On a weeknight. Uh, on a weeknight, a, a and, dinner, like an hour-long dinner. Yeah. And would the um, would the weekend be better to speak with her? Um, possibly, but I don't know if she'll come. Cause okay, so she was, that's okay. Yeah. A dinner is good. Yeah. Um, and sit down with her at dinner and get right to the point and say, sweetheart, I have a very serious, uh, very heavy thing on my heart to talk to you about. Uh, I love you with all my heart. I believe your mother does as well. It's not a matter of a dad against mom. It's a matter of... Uh, dad uh, loving God with all his heart and uh, because I know the love God has for you and the and the life he has for you I want you to be aware of these things Um, and talk about sex ed in school talk about if you can bring her some articles um, and say you know that you're you wish you could keep her from this, but if you cannot, uh, she has the right. Now, if she doesn't have the right to opt out, um, she has the right to use the beautiful heart God has given her, her ability to think her ability to know, even apart from mom and dad, what is right and wrong, and her true inner desire to be a beautiful soul. Um, And she needs to protect that, whether she sits in a sex ed class or not. She needs to protect that. And I'd say, sweetheart, don't ever let a man put his hand on you outside of the man who wants to give his life for you and marry you. And keep pure, sweetheart, not because it's my values, but because it's God's plan for you to be a holy, beautiful woman of God. And you're in the midst of an evil society, and you've got to find your way through that. I'll always be here for you. You could always ask me questions. I will pray for you every day. I'll do anything I can for you. I will not force you against your will. I cannot. But I want you to know I love you. I'm not against your mom. I'm not against anything but that which is evil for your soul and will take you from God in heaven. And so, oh, Dad, you're such a fanatic. Well, (laughs) sweetheart, I think God is a fanatic, honey. Uh, He gave his life for the truth. That's pretty fanatical. And I would give my life for you. So uh, just try not to buck what she says, but feed into it and tell her the truth. 
Okay, dear one, we've got to go, Joe. Yes, we'll pray for you, no question. God bless you. God bless all of you, and we'll be with you tomorrow morning. Okay.